So have you ever wanted a laser that could mark on metal? Well, this thing can do it as well as a whole lot more. Let's jump into it. So this is a very small form factor fiber style laser, but it actually isn't a fiber laser and we'll get into that here in a minute. But this is coming from 3P Lasers. This is from their EM Smart line. And they actually have several different EM Smart lasers that are straight up fiber lasers and fiber lasers are what you're gonna use to be able to engrave directly onto metal. And what's really nice about EM Smart is this overall form factor is a lot smaller than your typical fiber laser setup. In fact, this is from a review that I did of a standard fiber laser from Ohm Tech. And you can see that it has a big power supply box as well as a stand for the laser head itself. But in this case, they have incorporated all of that into one piece. Now, I've been saying this isn't a fiber laser. This is actually a 20 watt MOPA laser. And MOPA stands for Master Oscillator Power Amplifier. And if you're like me and that really doesn't mean anything to you, the big advantage of a system like this is you are able to engrave on more materials and you're able to do it in a bunch of different ways. If you've seen any of my reviews in the past, you know we've talked a ton about diode lasers. And diode lasers, you really only adjust the speed as well as the power of the laser. So literally how fast is it moving on the gantry and what is the power of that laser diode. And those diode modules have increased in power to nearly 20 watts watch, which is pretty wild. But when you come to something like this, it's an entirely different beast. And there's two main reasons for that. First is how the laser beam is actually focused and moves around your material. In the diode machines, you actually have the laser diode on a gantry. It's moving all around your work area to get your engraved. And then with a CO2 laser, you actually have a big glass tube on the back, then it bounces around a bunch of mirrors, and then it gets focused down through a lens that is still attached to kind of your standard gantry set up. But when you come to something like this, you really have no external moving parts other than the fact that you can focus this by turning this up and down. And that's because they use a galvanometer that moves your laser beam all around your work area. The big benefit about these is they are way faster than a diode machine or a CO2 machine. On those diode machines, I love to do my standard test file, which varies power and speed. And really we get the speed all the way up to 10,000 millimeters per minute. The top speed of this guy is 8,000 millimeters, not per minute, but per second. So if you do the math on the diodes, the top speed is 166 millimeters per second. So this thing is way faster. And you can see from these demos, these engravings are nuts how fast they actually go. Now, while the Galvo system is fast, it also means you have a smaller work area. Since we don't have a big old gantry that this thing can travel around, you're really limited by the width of this lens and how far it can move that beam. In this case, this is a 210 millimeter lens. You can get different sizes depending on what you're doing. And for this setup is 150 by 150 millimeters for your actual engraving area. So the second big difference between a machine like this and your typical diode or CO2 laser is how the laser beam is generated. And how it is made is actually what makes this different than a fiber laser. A fiber laser is using something called Q-switch to actually generate that laser beam. But this is using that master amplifier power oscillator to actually generate your laser beam. And that is where the MOPA name comes from. Okay, so how is this different than a fiber laser. So in addition to power and speed settings, you also are going to be able to play around with the frequency settings. A MOPA laser is going to give you increased frequency both on the low end and the top end. And those increased frequencies are going to give you a bigger range in terms of materials as well as the type of engravings you can do on those materials. And this MOPA laser also unlocks one other key setting and that is your pulse width. So literally how long that pulse is going to happen. Now we're not going to go really into detail on frequency and pulse width if that's something you are interested in and we can jump in deeper and all the physics and all that crazy stuff let me know down in the comments but let's actually talk on the practical side of things what that means so this is a list of all the stuff a fiber as well as a mopa laser can engrave so lots of different metals leather as well as plastics now the mopa is nice because it does a lot better job with plastic and that's just due to the fact that it can change its frequency and pulse width so you're really not melting the plastic underneath you're able to get a nice clean engrave and then also you can get color engraving 
especially on stainless steel. I've been doing a lot of testing with that and I still really haven't gotten my results dialed in. Once I do, I'll definitely make an update video so you can kind of see the settings that I'm using. Now, in a few of the results I have been getting, one big caveat with that is these are very dependent on like the angle that you're looking at. So don't think this is like a laser printer and you're gonna get like a full color image. These are definitely going to be more of a subtle effect. But another nice thing is you can actually get a black engrave on aluminum and that's something you really can't do with a fiber laser. So looking at the machine itself, it's pretty simple. Again, you're able to turn this and actually focus the laser inside of the software. You can turn on a red laser beam that will give you two dots and you just adjust this to those dots turn into one. So you know that it's focused really easy. You've got your power button here on the front. The fans are pretty loud, so you probably hear that right now. And you have this emergency stop button. So anytime something's going wrong, you can stop it. And you can also turn it back on. Then the actual work bed itself, it's got some pre-drilled holes that you can put in different jigs and different attachments to hold things down. And just in general, these style machines are set up to do big batches of parts. Maybe you're putting on part numbers, barcodes, logos, labels of different things, and you're just running through a ton of them. A lot of the software features are gonna allow you to do that. And by having this work bed with a bunch of different attachment points, you can make jigs where you engrave your material, take it out, put a new one in, engrave, take it out, put it in. Really easy to go quick through a lot of different parts. To control the laser, you are going to use EasyCAD, and that comes bundled, whether it's with the MOPA laser, that 3P laser provides. And EasyCAD is okay. It's definitely a different mindset than something like Laser Gerbil or Lightburn. But I've also heard that these style lasers are going to be supported by Lightburn in the future. And a lot of things I've been reading are saying in the next couple months. So hopefully that's something that I'll be able to update you guys on in the future, just because I love using Lightburn. Now, probably the biggest drawback with a MOPA machine is just the price. So the other EM Smart lasers that are fiber lasers are in the like 2,500 to 3,000 range. This MOPA laser goes all the way up to $5,000. That's just because this is newer technology and it really hasn't filtered its way down to where it's more affordable. But if you don't need those increased abilities on the frequency as well as the pulse width, depending on what you're working with. The other fiber options from EM Smart are pretty awesome. They actually have, well, this whole piece will fold down. So they are way more portable than the other options you might've seen out there. Okay, so let's talk about some examples. This is like a flask container. This actually has a coating on top. So when you actually engrave it, you're just removing that top coating. That's something you can do with a CO2 or a diode laser. This is just going to do it a lot faster. But if it was just actual metal, unlike a diode or CO2 machine, when it's actually metal, you can engrave directly onto it. This is a test file. I was playing around with frequency as well as power settings. And then I was also engraving directly onto stainless steel. You can obviously see some logos up here. And then on stainless steel, it's super hard to show on camera. You can see these logos up here. But you can also see this logo right here that is a lot more subtle. And then the thing I did the most are just these metal business cards. And this is with an actual image, obviously, of Baby Yoda or Grogu, but as you can see right now, it's engraving way, way, way faster than what you could do with a diode machine. Now, I am gonna be doing a lot more tests and showing you a lot more examples in the future. I have done one other review on this channel that actually is a fiber laser from Ohm Tech that is right there, and we're gonna jump into that right now. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.